Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Sarah or Eclectiverse, and I'm finally back with another video. It's been, what, like two months since I've actually made a video? Um, yeah, I don't have a great excuse for the first month, like December, besides the fact that it was the holidays and, you know, there's always a lot going on around the holidays with family and whatnot, but, uh, yeah, then I moved to Tokyo, so... Yeah, um, that was quite the change, needless to say, coming from a small city in the United States. But, I'll probably talk about that a little bit today, but first, let's talk about this build. So, I did the Simsation Nation random build generator app. I used that to generate a random house, and I will of course link that in the description so you can check it out if you'd like. The build that I got was a pink rustic country house in Newcrest with the lot trait bracing breezes for three sims with a budget of 57,000 simoleons, and it must include a game room and a garden shed. And that is what I did. I definitely managed to come in under budget. Um, you can check at the beginning of the video I did indeed only have 57k and I still easily came within budget. I'll probably try in the future some challenges with budget just because I think it's a lot of fun to try to figure out how to make things work with a small amount of money. Don't ask me why I decided to put that one section on there in the front on the right side. I. I don't know. I guess I just wanted to make my life more difficult, just make it like near impossible to roof while maintaining the style of a rustic country home. I don't know why I did that. Surely I'm not the only one who likes to just make their life harder sometimes. Because I was just, I didn't even, I didn't even consider, well, I did consider once or twice taking it off, but then I was like, nah, I'm good. And clearly I struggled with the pink thing just because it was hard to stay in the theme of a rustic home while maintaining a pink exterior. Like wall painting, it was just like wallpaper. I ended up doing paneling, the pink paneling, but it, it's just, eh, it's, it's okay. It could be better. I've done better, but you know what? It turned out in the end. It, it turned out in the end and I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm okay with it, you know? Sometimes you just have to learn to just settle with what you got. Because quite frankly, I could mess around with this for like mm, 24 hours straight, but but I would lose my mind in the process and uh, yeah, that's not exactly worth it, is it? Or is it? We suffer for our art, don't we? <coughs> <laughs> I just like bombed a little in my mouth. So, yes, I uh, moved to Tokyo. Long story, but I had been planning to move for about a year, but of course we had the wonderful disease going around. Yeah, not gonna go there, but you know what I'm talking about? 2020 slash 2021. And I honestly had no idea if I was gonna be able to come. I was supposed to come in October 2020, and um, the borders were locked down and had been since about March 2020. So no one was allowed to enter Japan besides, you know, Japanese nationals and like a few business personnel. And that was pretty much it. But I was supposed to be coming as a student, as a language school student to study Japanese and there was no way I could get in because I was not a business professional nor was I a Japanese national, so that was not going to happen. But shortly after October, they actually opened the borders for designated people such as students, so I was able to get in before they closed the borders again on January the 3rd. So um, yeah, I just made it in the nick of time. I got here New Year's Eve and yes, now here I am. Honestly, it's been really exciting. It's been such a great experience. I've already gotten to, well, honestly, the most exciting thing for me is all the food. And I've eaten so much food. I've had onigiri, I've had unagi, which is eel, um, onigiri or rice balls. So many things. I've eaten so much and I've loved it all. Okay, not all of it. I had natto, which is fermented soybeans. And they smell vaguely like peanuts. 
but they taste bad. <laughs> um, I feel like that's a very common uh, reaction for foreigners when they have natto for the first time, but... And I really wanted to like it, and from the smell I was like, oh, this is gonna be like peanuts. Bitch, no it's not. It is not like peanuts. Not at all. <laughs> that flavor is um, something else. Let's just say that. And oh my god, the plane right over. Actually, it wasn't that bad. Saying, oh, I, I can't really go out, you know, I'm just a little worried. And although I am genuinely concerned about that, also I, I, don't, I don't really want to go outside. I, I don't really want to go anywhere, so. <laughs> but I made it to Tokyo in one piece without really any issues at all. Um, we had to do a COVID test 72 hours, within 72 hours of flying out, which I somehow managed to do. <laughs> I had to rent a car because I had sold my car and drive three hours to the nearest rapid testing center to me and pay $100 to get tested which I'm not mad about, you know, that's just the times we are in right now and I chose to move now. I could have waited, but I chose to move now. So that is my decision that I made and I am here for it. I accept it. I respect it. You know, it's whatever. And obviously that test came back negative. So everything went well there. I got the test results back like in 40 minutes. It was crazy. And then I tested again at the airport. We had to test when we got there again, which I think is totally fair. And uh, that was negative as well. I was in the airport when I got to Tokyo, probably for like two and a half hours before I could leave, which actually, you know, isn't too bad considering all the paperwork we had to do. And, you know, I also had to go through customs and immigration. So yeah, I don't really think two and a half hours is, is all that horribly bad. But then again, this is the first time I've ever actually left the country, so I guess I don't really have anything to compare it to. Yeah, I've been several places in the United States, but I haven't left the country, so this is a completely new experience to me in every way, and I'm just soaking it up like a flower in the sun, just soaking up the experiences as they come. And now that I'm in Tokyo, seeing a lot of the homes and buildings here, it's been so interesting. I really need to get the Snowy Escape expansion pack sometime soon so I can mess around with that now that I'm kind of more familiar with what Japanese architecture really looks like. So look forward to that in the future. Also, I forgot to mention, um, I realized recently that, or I found out recently, that Japanese internet speeds are apparently uh, much better than in the US for around the same price. So yeah, uh, I'm probably going to be able to stream, which is great, and I'm so excited. Um, I'm probably only going to be streaming maybe at most once a week and likely on the weekends, probably in the evening US time, and probably uploading maybe every other week to YouTube, so at most. So yes, keep your eye open for that. And if this is the first time you're watching my video, hey, this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, hey, <laughs> what's up? Thanks for coming. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you. And also, I do have a separate channel that is specifically for uploading vlogs and stuff about Japan, my life here. It is called Sarah in Japan, Sarah with an H, and I will um, link that below as well so you can check that out if you're interested. If not, that's totally fine. You're just here for the Sims content. I feel you, and I'm happy to make more Sims content for you. So I actually didn't end up making a gaming room, quote unquote, but more of a gaming area because I just didn't really want to close it off too much. So I really wanted to have that open living area with the dining room, the kitchen, the living room, and then the study area or the gaming computer area. So that is what I ended up doing. Is it cheating? Maybe. But, um, there is a gaming computer. I definitely had a good time with the interior designing for this one. I really like the- Am I speaking from experience? Yes. Yes, I am. 
Considering that at one point we had six cats in our household, I would say I am um, well versed in the odors of felines. Let's just say that. Though luckily at the time that we had six cats, we no longer had carpeting in anywhere except ooh, two of the closets, two of the closets. So everywhere else was tile or laminate. Thank God. So I also tried to use a lot of plants inside the house as I was building it because I really wanted to keep with that kind of um, gardener's vibe since we were going to have that shed out back, a gardening shed. So I did use a lot of plants all over the place, including the kids' room. I don't know. Whenever I was putting plants in the kids' room, I was thinking to myself, I was like, do people do this in real life? Like, is there a reason that you shouldn't have plants in the child's room? Like, <laughs> all I can see in my head is just some child nomming on some, like, leaves that are poisonous somehow, and then you having to take your child to the hospital and being like, yeah, they ate a plant. And it's like, is your child a, a dog or, or a cat? Or, like, why are they just, like, nomming on plants? It's just... That's the image I got in my head for some reason, and now I'm telling you, so now you have it in your head. You're welcome. And I guess that's a stupid question. Yes, kids will put anything in their mouth, and that is usually how, at least half the time, they probably end up in the hospital, because they put things in orifices they don't belong in. Like the time whenever I was a child, whenever I shoved a pebble from the playground up my nose and couldn't get it out. <laughs> I still remember coming home and my mom being like, um, just blow, just hold the other side of your nose and blow as hard as you can. And I'm like, mom, I've been doing that this whole time. And she's like, well, do it some more because I don't want to take you to the hospital. Do you want to go to the hospital? And I was like, no. <laughs> oh, and I also, um, ate pebbles a couple of times on the playground. Just I, I don't know, in elementary school, I guess I was just trying to be cool, like, hey, look, I can eat these pebbles. Look how cool I am. I'm just like, I'm going to be so popular now that I ate these rocks from outside. What am I, a cow? Do I need to eat rocks in order to digest my food? No. <laughs> what was I thinking? Honestly, I don't even know. Ugh, it's just been so nice getting to play The Sims again. It's kind of nice being in a foreign country, actually, and playing it, because it's kind of brings me back home, back to being a child. It's very nostalgic, so it really makes me feel more at home, even though I'm in a totally foreign country. Although, really, I wouldn't say that I feel all that uncomfortable. Like, I didn't really have any, like, oh my god moments yet since I've been here. I've managed to settle in, I think, okay. And so this is the garden shed that I am working on right now. And I had a little bit of an issue because I don't really, didn't have like a whole bunch of garden items. So I kind of turned it into like a garden slash storage shed, which I was like, uh, I mean, it, it's basically, it, it works, it works. And I just left the flooring bare, like concrete, and then I did the interior walls like a plain, like white, kind of like off-white color. And then I added some plants right outside because, you know, it's a garden shed. So I feel like there needs to be some flowers nearby or it kind of looks weird. So, <laughs> and then I also added the exterior furniture just to kind of give it a more lived-in feel. I decided to go with the slightly nicer outdoor furniture for the front patio because I felt like it just made it look more put together. And then I also put some more garden items in the backyard. And I added the flower arranging stand and I also added a jungle gym in the back for the child. And that is my build complete. So let me know what you think in the comments. Um, definitely try out this generator out. I will link it in the description so you can give it a try too. It's really fun. And please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will talk to you next time. Bye!